Hi, everyone. Um, I'm here with the honors professor of the practice, Michael Patrick McDonald, and we're just going to talk a little bit about his upcoming virtual dialogue, honors landscape, storytelling landscape and contested identities. So, Michael, I don't know if you want to start by just telling us a little bit about the dialogue and... Uh, yeah. Sure. The, the dialogue focuses on the north of Ireland. Um, some people are used to the term Northern Ireland to describe the six counties on the island of Ireland that are still part of the United Kingdom as a result of historic colonization. But um, this isn't just Northern Ireland, it's the north of Ireland. Um, it's not just those six counties, it's the entire nine counties of, of the ancient province of Ulster, um, which is kind of a, you know, it, it's its own virtual journey um, culturally. Uh, Ulster is a very kind of specific thing, uh, partly because of a lot of the ongoing contested identities. So the course is called the North of Ireland Storytelling Landscapes and Contested Identities. And it's, it's really those three elements, um, those three elements kind of weave into each other throughout the dialogue, the role of storytelling, um, storytelling, and actually the storyteller is of uh, central importance in the culture of Ireland from, um, from ancient times until the present. Uh, the the storytelling storytelling and the role of the storyteller there is nothing probably more important there's no person probably more important in ireland than the person who can tell a good story um, and that goes for the poet um, the writer the musician the artist um, people who use theater people who tell stories in various ways um, in these days with graphic novels and so forth so it's all types of storytelling that we're looking at and you know the, the 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 storyteller was so central to Irish identity and culture and strength um, that it it was a target in the when when Britain colonized Ireland, um, the storyteller was was a target. Um, you know, it, it, there's often a quote um, that people refer to by Queen Elizabeth the uh, first with the colonization of Ireland, where she. Um, insisted that if they were to, um, if the British were to successfully conquer the Irish, they have to um, kill all the storytellers and break break their harps. The storytellers or bards would be another term for that. So that that just goes to show you how important it is. And another, you know, in more recent times, uh, you know, the very sh famous Irish poet Seamus Heaney, he was like, you know, he was he was he would be the the lead poet, the poet poet laureate, I suppose of Ireland in recent times. And you know, his, his passing, his funeral um, a few years ago was um, given the attention in Ireland that some countries would give to kings and queens, but we don't do that. Um, or at least most of us don't do that. Um, so the storytellers are cent of central significance uh, with the entire dialogue, which comprises two courses, um, and the role of landscape. And when we talk about landscape, I mean, when we think of Ireland, everybody thinks of landscape, I think. But, um, you know, in the landscape is also a story. And it's a story of a lot of, of colonization, a story of a lot of bloodshed, a lot of um, resistance, um, armed as well as intellectual resistance to colonial Britain. Um, and all those stories are in the landscapes. You know, often, especially in Ulster, um, who historically has lived somewhere, whether they be native Irish peasant colonized or British uh, colonial planter, um, you know basically by how good the land is, well, how arable the land is. You know, so a lot of the more barren or or the bog land where things don't grow, the thing, where things aren't very lucrative, would be the places where the the more native peasant was was kept, um, and the more lush arable land would be the the land taken by the um, the colonial planter given to the colonial planter, but often and owned by landlords, British landlords and so forth. So the, the, the landscape tells a story, but also in all the stories, all the greatest stories of Ireland, the landscape, the land has a huge role. So there you have the, the storyteller, you have the landscape, and then you have the issue of identity. And um, historically in Ireland, um, there's the native Irish identity, the, the Gaelic identity, and then there would be the colonial identity, which would be the British. Um, and that would tend, you know, that would be more upper class. Sometimes Irish native people would make it into that class and so forth, but overwhelmingly it would be um, a more British identified culture. Um, and that's something that, um, 
that existed throughout the history. You have the, the Gaelic Irish and the Anglo Irish, right? They'd be referred to. Um, the closer you get to Dublin, more colonized places, the more you'd have a, an Anglo, Anglo Irish identity. And, but in the north of Ireland, um, you, you have a, an ongoing kind of um, battle of identities uh, between Irishness and Britishness. And that was played out violently during the Troubles, the Thirty Years' War from 1968 to 1998, known as the Troubles, where um, you had the presence of the Irish Republican Army, which was the anti-British um, Irish Catholic identified. And when we say Catholic, we're not talking about religious, but just a cultural identity. Um, they're the paramilitary group. And then you had the British Army presence, and then you had um, the um, more British identified loyalist, loyal to the crown, unionist identity that also formed paramilitary groups. So you had a number of armed people battling and essentially battling over not just identity and identification, but who has the goods, right? So um, it's a colonial, it's a colonial situa situation. So all of those things weave into each other in this course, but, there's, but the role of the storyteller from ancient times throughout the Troubles and now into the period we're in now, which is the post-Troubles period, um, after the peace process, or actually we're, we have an ongoing peace process, I feel. Um, but the role of storytelling in, in this period is crucial as well. In this period, this kind of post-conflict period where people are trying to um, make sense of what happened, make sense of what happened over centuries of colonization, but also make sense of what happened throughout the horrors of the 30 year war known as the troubles from 1968 to 1998. And again, when I say storytellers, I'm not just talking about, um, uh, you know, uh, narrative uh, voices on the page and so forth. I'm, I'm talking about poets, I'm talking about musicians, a lot of theater. And the cool thing about both courses in this dialogue, you know, it's one central, it's one dialogue on this greater theme, but it's two separate courses and I'll get to that. But um, the greatest thing about it is that we're going to be zooming in a lot of people uh, from Ireland, from the north of Ireland, from Ulster, um, who are the storytellers. And whether they be tour guides or who will give us virtual tours or poets, musicians, we'll have actually um, people teaching us dance via Zoom, some Irish dance. Those will be you know, a lot of really fun courses that we'll have. Um, as well as uh, political leaders, um, activists, a lot of activist voices, but it's all about the voices. And, and students will see that whether someone is a poet or an activist or a dancer, um, it's, in Ireland, it's all about the story. Awesome, thank you. Um, and I know there are two courses with this dialogue. Um, can you talk a little bit about each course and if students can take one or the other, if they should mm -hmm. take both? Yeah, the, the courses are designed to be, the two courses within the dialogue are designed to be contiguous, but, um, but students are able to take course one or course two um, on their own. And if students were to take course two on its own, uh, they'd be focused more on uh, more recent times and the troubles and so forth and the post-conflict period and the peacemaking and so forth. Um, whereas course one will go back much further back to ancient times. But if someone takes only course two, I will do some things to catch them up um, to speed culturally. Course one is going to be focused uh, more on the, um, the culture, um, artistic expressions from ancient uh, to modern, and uh, and the role of the storyteller. Um, so we call it storytelling and culture. You know that that course um, in Ireland. Uh, course two will be focused more on this whole notion of um, using using storytelling as a way to transform trauma, war, atrocity, oppression into um, into voice empowerment and so forth. So um, the second course is more focused on, on uh, the themes of justice and healing and the role of the, the narrative voice in promoting justice and healing. And since it's focused on justice and healing, it will be more focused on the, um, it, it'll experience more of the 20th century conflict um, 
uh, from the early 20th century with the, um, the Easter Rising and the break from Britain, the break that uh, 26 counties had from Britain, and then the later 20th century 30-year um, war called the Troubles from 1968 to 1998. And then most importantly, I think, for course two, is the post-conflict period, the peace process, and what's incredible um, over there right now in Ireland, in the North and particularly, is the amount of artistic work that goes into justice and healing. Um, and, you know, when you're in the North, I'm over there a lot, and, you know, a lot, of, pretty much everyone you meet in the six counties that are called Northern Ireland, pretty much everyone you meet has been uh, traumatized by, by the troubles, um, whether they lost an aunt or an uncle or a father or a sibling um, through that war. And so there's a lot of trauma, there's a lot of kind of collective uh, trauma, post-traumatic stress. But the incredible thing is that uh, being Irish people, they've, they've um, the people that are um, the most successful at achieving um, a sense of justice and healing. And I always talk about those two things as an intersection, the intersection of justice, healing, the people that are most um, healthy, I think on that front are people who have used the arts, used storytelling, used that, that Irish storytelling. And when I say Irish, when I say Irish, I'm talking about, you know, not only the Catholic Irish identified population, but, you know, the Protestant British identified population um, in which you'll also find, whether they want to acknowledge it or not, um, a very Irish storyteller within. So um, the storytelling, the role of, the powerful role of storytelling on this island has played um, a huge role in the peace process and in the current period of getting to tell all of our truths about what happened and finding a sense of both justice and healing. And you know, that's an ongoing process and a lot of people still have a lot of work to go, to go. but you know, some of the theater going on, students will meet uh, playwrights, they'll meet actors, they'll meet poets. Um, so both courses, they'll meet incredible people uh, from Ireland um, who will, will Zoom daily into class. Um, and, uh, but the first course will be more probably ancient to uh, modern, I guess you could consider it, up until um, the Easter Rising of the early 20th century. And we're going to be exploring the stones, the ancient, you know, the Neolithic stones and the role of storytelling even in those stones, all the way to the Easter Rising of the early 20th century. So that's a big span. And then the second course will be um, more focused on the modern period and the role of conflict and war and atrocity and oppression, but also transforming that into justice and healing through this ancient quality of storytelling that exists over there. Sounds really great. Um, <laughs> do any of the courses fulfill uh, new path requirements? Yes. Um, so course one fulfills, um, I always have to remember the letters DD and, and IC. So course one um, focuses, uh, well, it will fulfill the new path, uh, diversity and difference or difference in diversity, which is it? difference in diversity. Is that how? how yeah. Difference in diversity. Yeah. Uh, okay. And, and of course with that, um, and the, the way it does that is through some of the colonial story and, and because a lot of the, the identities of the island of Ireland are rooted in that colonial history. So whether you identify as British or Irish or, and so forth. And, um, and then um, the other one that it fulfills is interpreting cultures. And, and that's obviously whether we're looking at um, some of the Neolithic stones and the designs and storytelling that exists in the stones or looking at a very colonial, you know, Victorian British building in Dublin. Um, you want to, we're going to look at kind of, it, 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 this course involves a lot of semiotics, really looking at the stories that exist in the landscape, whether it's an urban landscape or a rural landscape. And that, that requires um, a, a little bit of um, interpreting culture. So there'll be a lot of interpreting culture in it. So it fulfills DD and IC. Um, the second course fulfills um, SI and WI, which are societies and institutions. And the other one um, is writing intensive. Uh, we will be doing a lot of journal writing. Um, 
and remind me to mention the group projects at the end of all this. But um, societies and institutions, obviously, because we'll be looking at the peace process and the role of various parties in, uh, you know, in pulling together um, something that worked for most, not for all, but that worked for most people um, with that peace process. And so, and then the writing intensive, just because storytelling is really central to both. I mean, writing intensive could be for both, but it's, it's more specifically for the second one. So all four, um, well, the four new paths uh, are throughout the entire di dialogue um, are diversity and difference, um, as well as interpreting cultures. And then secondly, societies and institutions and the writing intensive, but they're broken up into those two classes. Um, the other thing uh, that these, either of these courses fulfill um, the honors department's um, uh, seminar requirement, because most of what, like this isn't going to be, you know, a, a lecture, this is going to be a seminar. And when we're on Zoom, we're going to be meeting these people Zoomed in from Ireland, whether they're playwrights or activists or both. Um, and we'll also be interacting with them. So, um, and you know, seminar, people get scared sometimes by seminar. I, I teach an upper level seminar course. People are sometimes afraid that you have to always be showing that you're participating. But really for me, uh, participation is about engagement. And that's just, there, you know, the students make that obvious if they're really engaged. And, um, and we are actually, with my teaching assistant, Jeannie Mullins, we're actually really adept at breaking people into groups in Zoom. So we'll be breaking people into smaller groups for three or four person discussions, which is much easier, uh, sometimes one-on-one -on -one discussions. So um, whether, you know, I just make sure that people find their way to engage. People don't have to always be talking or, you know, participating, but I help people to find their way to um, to engage, which is what seminar is about, really that kind of interaction that exists. And then finally, the other thing I want to um, mention is that these courses do not have a final. They don't have a final exam. They don't have a final paper. What they do have, is, and what I love uh, doing in all of my courses, is a final group project. So, and it goes along with the whole theme. You know, all my courses deal with social justice and conflict um, transformation and peace building and so forth. So I, I really find that when students work in groups, um, they have to bring out those skills, of course, you know. It's only in being able to work uh, in groups that we find ways to solve a lot of our toughest um, historical social justice um, issues. So students break into groups according to mode of storytelling. And by that, I mean, uh, if students gravitate toward uh, short documentary filmmaking, they'll form a group. Uh, if students gravitate toward podcasting, they'll form a group. Some students might, um, might uh, be interested in graphic novels or graphic storytelling, meaning with the visuals. Um, you know, and I would call it maybe graphic histories because we'll dealing a lot with, be dealing a lot with histories and cultures. Um, some students might want to do a PowerPoint. And, you know, so all of these are modes of storytelling. PowerPoint is, a good PowerPoint is a good story. You know, and, um, and so students will break into those groups according to their mode of storytelling, their media, but then within the group, they will discuss the topic and work toward it, the topic and then um, run it by me for approval. And that's really the most fun. We've had tremendous with a lot of the courses, um, whether about Ireland or just social justice issues in general, we've had really tremendous um, group project products in all of the courses. And it's really my favorite, my favorite part of this, um, especially because, you know, the age group, you know, the college age group is really good at this stuff, at, at podcasting and, and so forth. So for someone from my age group, it's really exciting to see how, and I'm a writer, you know, and, and, and I, I write books and it's really interesting to see how we can take this ancient notion of storytelling and bring it into the future, the way that a lot of young people do. That sounds great. I wish I had a course like this when I went to school. <laughs> <laughs> um, what was one of your favorite final projects? Um, one of my favorite actually was a, a, a group of students did a graphic, um, I don't want to call it a novel because it's not a novel, but graphic history, I guess, um, a graphic narrative, let's call it a graphic narrative, but, you know, using both um, artistic drawing skills and sometimes students 
you don't have to, you know, some students draw by hand, but others are really good at um, doing the visuals via, via uh, computer graphics. And it basically told the story of the colonization of Ireland, but they did a really good job. And it was just really beautiful to look at. Um, when students do a static project, they, they, would, they would submit the static project, um, meaning like a, you know, a, a, an actual graphic narrative uh, that's uh, maybe five pages long. But in addition, I have them turn it into an MP4. Um, and so what they're ultimately submitting to me is a video and they'll be turning the pages or however they want to uh, turn, the, turn the pages. So they submit both the hard copy thing um, or the computer um, version of that, you know, so they, they could submit a PDF plus an MP4, but all of the projects involve an MP4 or in the case of a, in the case of a podcast, it would be an MP3. Um, but so you, you get both, you get a, you get a video as well, but they had a really clever way of turning the page, which was, you know, using computer skills that they have that I don't have, you know, I had to even figure out how to do it, to read it. But, um, so you're getting their voices narrating it as well as, um, the beautiful artwork. Um, so you're getting so many, so many layers. The other thing is, um, podcasts are, some of the podcasts have been excellent because, see, I've been going to Ireland, I've been going to Ireland specifically to the north, to Belfast, to Derry, to all these places where the conflict happened and where there's still ongoing issues. And I know a lot of people there. So I know, I know a lot of players to the conflict. I know a lot of uh, people that are, were involved in the peace building, a lot of people that are um, doing community organizing that's about justice and healing. So I introduced students to these people and then these people end up being part of their podcasts because then they do follow up and they interview them. You know, they'll, they, they will meet through my course. They'll meet people who are members of the IRA. They'll meet people who are part of the peace process. They'll meet um, theater um, directors and actors who are currently telling the stories, their own stories and other people's stories from the troubles. And so I will hook them up with those people for whatever projects they're working on. Um, so they could, with a podcast, they would, they could get the audio online from those people. So listening to some of the podcasts has been amazing. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm really, I want to compile actually all the projects because they've been incredible. And I'll show my current students this year, the products of previous courses. Great. Sounds like it's a good fit for being a virtual experience. I'm excited about it. Yeah. It's, awesome. This is going to be fun. Um, and, you know, I feel like I, I, we're going to go there. We're really going to go there. Um, you know, in this place is like, a, I know this place like the back of my hand and a lot of these people they're going to meet that are incredible people are friends of mine. And, and um, so that's going to be great. Um, We'll have a little bit of Boston thrown in as well. You know, I'm from Boston. I'm Boston native. I don't know if you see my sweatshirt. All dirty Boston. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I'm from Boston. I have the sweatshirt to prove it. No, but um, some students might know um, my books. I wrote a book called All Souls, A Family Story from Southie, um, as well as another book, Easter Rising, A Memoir of Roots and Rebellion. And both of those are memoirs about growing up in South Boston in the period when it um, held the highest concentration of white poverty in America, experiencing a lot of loss and violence and trauma in my own community, but then finding a way towards community activism, uh, community organizing, community building uh, with people from across town, uh, creating uh, diverse uh, anti-racist, anti-violence coalitions in Boston um, with activists and survivors, survivors of homicide victims I've, I've worked with who are black, white, Latino, Asian. So a lot of my experience in Boston is what, I mean, I'm Irish background, my family's from there, but, but my interest in Ireland isn't just about blood lineage. I really actually don't care a whole lot about that, but I do care about um, the history of this colonized place and its connections to other colonized places. So really this, this course isn't gonna be you know, I, even though we're looking at Ireland, we're going to be thinking about South Africa. We're going to be thinking about um, issues around racism in America. Um, we'll be look, we'll be thinking definitely about um, Israel Palestine. So this has a, a global element that's a that really goes beyond the particular particular locale that we're in. And the reason for that is because of um, 
I come to this course as an organizer, as someone with a, an activist background. Sounds great. I want to take the class. <laughs> <laughs> you can, can sit in anytime, sure. All right, awesome. You know, yeah, you're more than welcome. Um, anyone in the honors department, um, any, any, of, any of you fact, uh, staff around uh, from honors, are welcome to um, sit in. We might recruit you into some discussions. I want to learn the Irish dance. So I want to go to that. Oh, class. good. Okay, you're welcome to that. That'll be great. Awesome. <laughs> and, and I don't know if people know this. So when people think of Irish dance, um, they think of the straight shoulder thing, which is fun and great, and it, but it, it has it's its own thing. But older than that tradition is what's called Shanos, S-E-A-N, Shan, Shan, which is old. Not the same as the name Shan, but Shan is old. Uh, Nos, oh, Shanos is basically old style. And old style dance, it's older than the straight shoulder thing. There are a number of theories where the straight arm thing came about, um, some to do with colonization, some of the stories are to do with the, uh, the control of the, cap that the Catholic Church had on, on the country. Um, but before the, the older tradition, Shano style dancing is much more loose. It's much more throwing around the arms and shoulders. And it's actually the roots of American tap dance. American tap is rooted in um, Irish and African dance and the exchanges that happened between people of those two backgrounds in, you know, working in, in shared workspaces on, on the railroads and so forth. Um, and so um, I, I actually give a lot of information about that as well. Um, the roots of that being, the roots of American tap being both traditional Irish Shan nose dancing, which is much looser tap dancing, and, and Juba dancing, African Juba dancing. Very cool. Um, all right. So come to that class for sure. Yeah, definitely. And we'll have to, the thing is with the Zoom, I'll just make sure students know ahead of time. Like if you have a room like this, you can just stand back there. You know, um, some people have their space really confined, but, but I'll encourage them for that class to have a more open space and maybe hard floors and, uh, and some kind of nails on the bottom of their shoes or something. Oh yeah, I'll have to wear really heavy shoes to annoy my downstairs neighbors because they always annoy me. So it'll be a little revenge. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, um, my neighbors are because of the quarantine. They're, you know, everyone's getting into baking, so they there's so much dough pounding up there, and um, it just sounds like the house is going to be knocked down. So I, I need to get revenge on them too. Yeah. Sounds good. <laughs> so anyone who needs revenge on their neighbor should join yeah. this class. I do have my blender. My Nutri Blend, my Ninja, is really loud. It's like one. It's like a lawnmower. So that works sometimes too. Awesome. <laughs> well, any last comments or thoughts you want to share with students about the dialogue? No, I'm excited. Students can pick up the course. Um, you know, with, I think within two days of the start date. Um, oh, we're gonna. Um, this is important actually. So. Um, on the 28th is when we start course one, but both people from both courses, um, we want them to come to a pre-course orientation, which is Wednesday. So that's this coming Wednesday, um, the 27th from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And that'll be, you know, online, of course. And, um, and that'll be more like the logistics, some of the tech logistics for students that might, I've been doing Zoom courses for a long time. And, and um, so there are certain things that, um, I'm really kind of um, uptight about, you know, like everyone will be muted when they come into class, all those kind of rules. So it'll be basic logistics around tech stuff, as well as some cultural introduction um, involving some of the stuff I just spoke about here. And then I know in, in Banner, the second course was incorrect for a while, but it is Monday through Friday. Yep. It's Monday through Friday um, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And you know, with a break, um, that three hours will go really, really fast because you're going to be meeting people. It's not going to be a lecture. You're going to be breaking into groups. You're going to be asking questions of people who are um, zoomed in from from Belfast and Derry and from the countryside and so forth. And um, so it'll go quick. And then we have like um, course one has one Saturday that's going to be more informal. Like, well, they're all going to be pretty informal because it's seminar, but a Saturday that's going to um, be more for students' questions and conversations with each other and with me, kind of like a brown bag hangout session. Um, and course two will also have one Saturday that's like that. The two courses will come together at the very end uh, for presentation day to present their final group projects. 
and that just means you know um, giving an introduction on Zoom and playing your video. It could be a, you know I think a video would be a documentary. A short documentary is like um, I think six to eight minutes uh, or podcast or whatever. Great, awesome. All right, well I'll sign up before <laughs> Wednesday. Yep. <laughs> I'll get you the I'll get you the syllabus and um you'll be able to you know we'll have that by day one and uh, you'll be able to figure out what looks interesting to you and if if the other any uh, any of the other staff at honors want to attend any of them they can drop in as well. That's great. I might put you a little that. might put you to work a little bit. But. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> awesome. All, All right. right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm gonna stop the recording now. Bye.